Okay, uh, all ready to go. We'll uh, today we'll talk about doing a tail insert for uh, pin tail. And, and there's a few different ways of doing it. Um, this you could also use this method for an old squall or long tail duck. Um, this is one of the ways I do it. Um, I use a, a piece of, uh, and generally, you can buy either an elbow like this, what do you call this? EBS or? PVC. PVC. So, and I, I used to do the white, but now I've been doing the black because uh, Pintail's tail is black and the uh, old spa or long tail duck's tail is black. So that way, if any paint does wear off, it's still going to be black. Um, so it's nice for a working decoy. Other things you could use for tail inserts is hardwood, like dogwood or um, things like that work very well for tails um, inserts. Um, so, and the reason I, I used to buy just the straight pipe, straight PVC pipe, and uh, cut it out on the bandsaw, and then I would um, take a torch of some sort or uh, to heat it up and, and to bend it to get some curvature and um, it seemed like I always would end up with a kink in there somewhere so and now after I thought about there's probably a way if you want to do that you could maybe you take a piece of wood and cut it to the curvature you want and then when you heat it up lay that lay that PVC over the top of that wood and then it's gonna, when it cools it'll dry to that curvature I always would heat it up with a I don't even think it was anything real hot but I did always end up with a cake so so now I've been buying these elbows and the nice thing about these is you can end up with a, a real tight curve where you can find something you know in through here that isn't as sharp or you can move it over and take it out of here where you get more curvature so in in here within here you can generally find something that'll work for you for a tail and I just bought this at the Home Depot or I'm sure you get Menards or any other big box store. What size is that? Is that uh, six this is six. Is it six? Five? Five. So but that's kind of what I start with. Um, and even on the inside here, you can type. I generally use, I don't use the ends here, I generally use the stuff in between. So what I do is I'll run it through the bandsaw and through here, just be careful. I'd use an older blade because probably if you cut into this, your blade is probably not going to be the best anymore. So I cut in through here and then when I get, then you end up with a, a sliver kind of similar to what uh, Bruce says here, I'm going to be curved, curved, and then I draw, draw my tail on there, and then and cut it out. And, um, um, I generally cut them a little, little wider. You'll end up with saw marks here, um, and they're they're in there. Hand sanding would be pretty tough, but you can do it. it just take a pretty aggressive sandpaper to get them out. And then, as you notice, it's kind of got some curvature that way. A knife will, will it will carve with a knife. Uh, but generally, I use a Fordham with like a sanding disc on it to, to shape them up a little bit. I don't uh, for hunting decoy like this. I don't get them. I, I keep them about this thickness. But I just I don't want the curvature on the inside there, so I. I just take that, knock that off a little bit. Um, then what I did is I drilled a hole into the top so I have something to pin it with. And then I took a nail and epoxy glued that into it. And this, on this side, this part of the nail is going to go into the body when I'm done with it. So, um, is that going to be flush? No, with the wood, or you've got to bury it. In I'm going to bury it in here. So, so, uh, so I, I've kind of got the decoy rough carved out. Kind of have the tail curvature started there, um, 
And so what I'm going to do is uh, it's going to actually be into the wood, something like that. Um, you can do this with power or with the knives. I end up, I'm going to put in a cut, stop cut in now with a nice sharp knife. and just start cutting that out. Is that what you did with those, those old squaws that you had? Yeah. Boy, and then you forked them, right? They were... Those, yeah. With the old squaws, yeah, you could, even with a pintail, if you wanted to, you could. If it's a working decoy, you maybe not, but if it's more of a decorative or a right. smoothie, then you could, you know, add a little interest right. by it. Yeah, a they really, fork. those old squaws look fantastic. I guess the old squaws, it, you see that because it's the wind Yeah. that's blowing. That's what kind of separates them a little Separate bit. That, I wonder what. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So you're going to five man epoxy? Or five man epoxy in there. And then. Uh, so then you're going to work on the feather itself? Then, uh, the feather itself, all. Yeah, then I'll I'll kind of blend it in together. Question: Did you yeah. drill through this way, or did you drill it from the top? No, I drilled it from the top. This way? Yeah, with the drill press, and I kind of came off the. Oh, that's what. Okay. I think it, with that curvature, it's kind of tough to come in the straight. Okay. Yeah. But I got it in there a ways, and I got that epoxy in there. That's not going anywhere. And then uh, what Dave did is, when you cut your side profile out, you cut this, this, this square out. So that'll receive the whole tail. You boxy glue that in. You know, similar to this. And your tail is like this and it fits in there. Now, if I were doing a pintail hen, I would probably have, or pintail, I'd have the Imagine that's the tail. I'd have that in my pattern. Is that what you did or no? Or well, you trim them? Yes and no. We had a, an attachment that we put on some of them. Oh, attachment after. Okay. Otherwise, I'd just cut this piece out along with the tail. And uh, if you leave it pretty thick like this, even if it's some cedar or whatever this right. is, cedar, or whatever it is, it would it'd probably be okay. 
But if you're doing cork, I would do something with this is how we, think a lot of us do our tails. Even if it wasn't a pin tail, it's just a regular mallard even. I think a lot of the cork ones I recommend doing it this way. Could you explain how you would work from there on into the cork? <clears throat> yeah. What would you use? I mean just for the regular body itself? Yeah. Um, so once once you get it bandsawed out to this point and you get your tail tail cut out, uh, then I glue it in with an epoxy. And I would save, like when you cut the bandsaw out, you end up with that fine cork dust on your, probably in your bandsaw, around the wheels or around your bandsaw. Collect that and just put it in a little jar, save it. If what that works real nice for, as if you can see, it's not a perfect fit. It's pretty tough to get a perfect fit when you're cutting it out this way to try to get this perfectly square for your wood to fit in there perfectly tight. So you end up with some deep gaps like that. So what I do is I glue this together. I take that fine cork dust, mix it in with some epoxy like this. So it ends up with a little heavier consistency. And you smear that all in there, smear it on your wood. And then that, that'll help, that'll almost form like an epoxy, like a cork fill, like a wood fill, but only be like a cork fill. And you'll end up with air bubbles or air pockets and stuff. And then just go back and mix up some more epoxy with the <laughs> cork dust. Just put it put it in there and eventually you fill up those little bubbles and and then when you sand it or carve it together you end up it's it's a good seam then because you kinda got that it kind of fills the seam up nice. And I use that around the heads too if you can't get a nice fit around the head. Do the same thing. But then after it's glued in, then you just go through and carve it. Thank you. What? Um, the cork, I use, uh, I, I use power on my cork. I use a Fordham with a, with like a sanding drum. Uh, like a three quarter inch um, diameter, about an inch long, just a drum. To me, that works real slick. And messy. And messy. Do it outside in the garage. <laughs> well, steady clean there. Yeah. Um, files work nice. Um, find your work. Yeah. Uh, knives work. Can I just peel off a section or no? Or is this for somebody? I don't know who's taking the bonuses here. This right here. Oh. Oh, can you picture it? No. <laughs> 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 you want to see your 20 minute special. Yeah. yeah. Right in there. But. You can take a knife, draw a knife. Knife would probably be. This is kind of short. You'd want a longer knife. But. But you'll end up with, you know, it's not perfect, but if you used a, you know, once you sand that up, it'll be just fine. Or file it. Phil, you do a lot of filing. You do oh, more, course, yeah. yeah. Phil, there's a lot of filing. I can shape it uh, more. shape that 20 minutes. Yeah. Or less. So. But, yeah, just round it off nice, the file, or or the power for them. You go real quick to the Fordham too. But it is a dusty mess. Thank you. When you mount your head on there, Tom, I guess, I don't know, just for a conversation, you know, well, I usually when that block is still in its square form, and when it's uh, flat, usually I'll take that block, or whether it's, uh, you know, cedar or cork, I'll drill that pilot hole, I'll drill that hole for that dowel into the head while that block is still square. Because at that point you're still sitting flat in the drill pressure and making a nice 90 degree hole. Yeah. So before you, you know, if, like I guess I'm looking at that cork there, I see there's a little bit of a slope there, so you would have a hard time putting your head in there unless your head you wanted to have a slope. But if you want to have your neck joint really come together nice and tight and square, the same thing on the on the head before I even cut the head out when the head is still on its block profile. Yeah. I'll take that on the drill press while it's still square. I'll drill that hole in the head of this before I do any carving at all. Sure. That way those two joints will come together perfect for you every time. Yeah. 
even then it, when you're drawing your patterns out or you're cutting your birds out I, I like keep try to keep that as parallel to the bottom as I can is that way if this part is flat or parallel to the bottom then when you put your head on you can turn it any way you want you're not going to end up with a cockeyed head um, is that this view put it on something that might be sloped like this and you put something flat on there, when you turn it, it's going to be looking up at you. It'll raise up or cock down. Yeah, up. it's going to look up this way, drop the other way. So if you get that shelf level, and then your head is, it, then you can put it on there and you can turn it any way you want. And then when that uh, shelf is nice and flat yet, uh, I guess we all tend to look at everything, but look at the uh, cedar decoy, or uh, the little here, you can see the uh, side pocket where it comes behind the neck, kind of a low point, I guess I call it the shoulder. Usually I'll take that side profile and I'll, you know, I'll measure that distance there. And then I'll take just a little gauge drill bit, you know, an eighth inch, sixteenth, and I'll drill those two shoulder things down and that block is still square. So as, as I'm bringing the sides down, I'm just chasing that hole down. When I run out of hole, I don't go inside the same. Because I mean, you know, kind of what works for me, I guess, guys. Right? I guess I just go crazy with something else. You know, before I start, you know, do my liner, I mean, I got a real cutter. You know, I, I, so before I do any shaping, as soon as I get her cut out, as soon as I, I get my, my hull left, you know, all the pieces, I leave it on her and I make sure I transfer all my center points and my shoulder points. I just got lines all over the place so I know where I'm at to keep things symmetrical. But when that head is sitting here, I know where this little point of the shoulder is right here. You know, I'll measure this out off the table. Okay, I'm two and a half inches up, or I'm two and a quarter, whatever it is. And I'll come up two and a quarter, I'll make a point, I'll put it with my drill press, and I know how far down I'm going to chase that drill bit. So there will be a hole right about there, right about there, and the one for the head. These two, these three do not always line up. This hole could be anywhere. It depends how you set that head in there. So usually when I take that head, you know, I'll transform uh, there's a couple indicator marks on my head where I put the hole in the head. Then as I put that on it, then I'll take these, you know, transposing marks here, and I'll, I'll reline those up on that body, and that'll get you that whole lined up perfect every time. So I guess as much layout as you can do ahead of time, and you know, think about your cuts and before you go crazy cut something off because then you're fighting it all the way through. Yeah. You must be a builder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just got it. You know, you get it all figured out. It's all about layout. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>